Hey everyone, we're going to be going over the live that Michelle deleted that she made Penelope a mod during. I haven't seen anyone else post it, so I figured I would. She also talks about her son and what she was suggesting then <laughs> to compare it to what she's saying now, which she's not even following whether or not he got out accurately. She believed someone in the chat when they said that he got out and he'd just been transferred this last week. So yeah, let's take a look. Glad to have you. It's three and a half boxes. So they're like, she drank a whole bottle and like a three and a half boxes Michelle, it doesn't really matter how much you drank. Just like you recently confessed that you ended up giving your days away of sobriety, but it wasn't a big deal because you only had one margarita. You didn't have three or four. You're okay. Moderation never lasts. Anyone in recovery for a decent amount of time knows that. I drank three and a half glasses of wine. Yeah, the day before my son's court date. The one where he was looking at 10 to 99. Excuses. Excuses. Yeah, and I don't know why the chat didn't show up. Otherwise, I'd be displaying it so y'all could see when Penelope and everybody else or whomever else comes in and says what and who she's responding to, but it, the chat replay wasn't up. And I got this three hours after in the middle of the night. So I don't know why I didn't, but yeah. And the DA wasn't prepared for him. No, wait. Oh, it is 10 minutes, okay. So the DA wasn't prepared for his case when he went forth. And the judge was like, no, you can't have a continuance. And so they dropped charges. Depends on the glass. I'm like two and a half for you. <laughs> right, right, that big glass is two and a half. You're right. So we went to court last week and I had been stressing, but I've been really stressing because he was looking at like 10 to 99 years. Um, 10 to 99 years, yes, that sucks. And we've heard what you've said about him prior. I won't go into that, but more excuses. Yes, that's very stressful, but it's only stressful or a concern of yours when you choose to make it one. Now you don't even know what his status is this last week. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. You're saying I'm doing great. I wasn't doing good yes, yesterday afternoon and all last night, but I did drink. He was looking at 1099 for armed robbery and felony possession. And uh, felony possession was on armed robbery. And he was looking at 1099 and the ADA was not prepared for trial and asked for continuance. And the judge was like, no, you can't have a continuance. And I was like, we're not ready. So we dropped charges on him. And he's been in jail for like nine months. And I um, was beside myself. Because he never thought I was ever going to hug myself ever again, ever again. And so, I don't know, a couple days, four or five days ago, I was bawling my eyes out because I was happy. And all these haters were like, I can't believe you're not standing behind your son. I can't believe you're not backing your son. I can't believe you're not saying all these things about your son, your son, your son. Shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. And then I got happy because they dropped the charges on him. And then it was like, your son's so horrible. He should be in jail. Shame on you. He needs to be locked up. Make mind up. Make mind up. People would say the things like, he hurt someone. He should be in prison or whatever to hurt your feelings. Before... You agreed with them, <laughs> or you post to. Suddenly, it's this big burden. Confusing. Right. So they got the charges, but yet two other charges, right? We didn't know what his charges were in Jefferson Parish. So they transferred, they transferred him to Jefferson Parish yesterday, because they had three to ten days to transfer him. We really didn't know what his charges were in Jefferson Parish. So I turned my phone on no calls just now, and I will definitely remember 100% to turn it off, because I missed calls yesterday. Yesterday, they transported him to Jefferson Parish. And so at this point, she was keeping up with his transferences, but now she doesn't even know whether or not he got out. It's not a concern whatsoever. And she had her phone turned ringer on when whomever l left her last said that she ignores her calls from her son. Hmm. Um, do you really think, do you think he'll really better his life? Because, you know, you never know. You never know what that Um, he was raised right. Um, here comes a history lesson. Well, however she wants to tell it this time. And I do remember her saying or suggesting her son was a problem child. So now he's been raised right, I guess. She said he was always sneaking out and stuff, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I'm not going to interrupt. She talks about her divorce and... She claims she's correcting allegations she saw people make. I had him lose um, one month away from 15 years old. Um, there was, I said, I got on yesterday or day before yesterday, talking about stuff, and apparently I left something out of my story. Um, I had a nervous breakdown when Jonathan died, three months after Jonathan died. Joseph went to go live with his dad. My mother took. Joseph went to go live with his dad, and I just had Joseph take me. And my mother thought to me it was too much of a burden for her because he was 17 months old. And so she allowed me to go into foster care. I heard people say, why did she just give him to foster care? And I had a nervous breakdown three months after Timmy died. I was going through a divorce. I thought the divorce five weeks before Jonathan died. Five weeks before Jonathan Well, yeah, well, Jonathan was five weeks before I thought the divorce. This is confusing because she claims that she went to her mom when she was a teenager or whatever and told her mom about her abuse, her alleged abuse, and that her mom then sent her away. So now she had another nervous breakdown at this point. She's not specifying what age, but... Okay, and Timmy got put into foster care because of her mom. Not because her mom was taking care of her kid, and then the child got put into foster care, but it's her mom's fault. Tim didn't live in, live in the house. I wasn't cheating on Tim. I have never cheated on Tim. I cheated on Tim one time, one time, on purpose. Because we had never. The only thing that we had secret in our marriage is that we never cheated on each other ever. And he relapsed, and then he's over. And then he relapsed, and then he's over. And he relapsed, and then he's over. So I had been so pissed. I was so pissed at him the last time he was sober. I purposely was co workers. That sounds really shitty. That was really shitty. That was a really shitty thing to do. But I purposely was co workers. And when he came home after his last relapse, I told him, straight up, Sean. And he didn't believe me. He did not believe me that I cheated on him. And I was like, so sorry, I did. So it wasn't like I was running around with him. He didn't even believe me when I told him I cheated on him. So I'm going to fill a few holes in a little story, but he, he did not believe me when I told him I cheated on him. 
you know, he wants you to think they'll be marriage. Again, slighting, refractioning off her accountability because he didn't believe her when she confessed it. That doesn't make it any better that you did it. Okay, so he didn't think you did would do it, but you did. Period. Are we going to the head? So when the kids were moved around, yes, Tim's parents went and got Timmy out of foster care because my mom and dad were like, no, he's 17 months old. We go back and forth. We go to the racetrack every day. We run horses. I'm sorry. I just can't deal with the 17 month old child. Now, the kids were returned back to my custody three months later. The witness is like, I just three times a week after driving it up. Put them up on DFR, daily reason for me. I think it's like 250 so far since the years ago. Yes, I edited out a lot of just dead air or nonsense or rambling. And at this point, she's talking about her dad, implying that her parents were made of money or she was brought up with parents that have money, probably because people don't believe her or some have said it's been proven otherwise. And that she looked it up and her dad's made two hundred and fifty thousand dollars already this year. Great. Let's not let's not fuck around my hands on money. They were paying Joe to keep Joseph in Key West Florida. My dad has a busy schedule, which is running every day, five days a week. My mother didn't want to be My mother was paying Joe to keep Joseph. Tim's family were like, we can't have Tim in, in, in foster care. It wasn't my choice. I had a nervous breakdown. Part of the reason why I had a nervous breakdown is Tim was on that at the time. He could have stepped up and took Timmy, but Tim is the reason why I had a nervous breakdown. Because he was up all the time at night. And every single night around two, three o'clock in the morning, he'd call for a welfare check like oh, on the kids. For no reason whatsoever to fuck with me. Okay, we're watching this and editing, and I have to know on top of the note I previously had made. But see, Michelle, this is why your stories are so unbelievable and why people have such a hard time and why you probably mess up the details because they're never linear. There's always, you started with your mom getting involved, and now you're back to having the children by yourself and Timmy being there and being messed up all the time, but then not being there because he would call a wellness check on you or the kids. And I even slowed it down because I wasn't sure if you said on me or on Vinny or Timmy. And you say, it sounds like you say on Timmy, and then you say, on the kids. Now, why, I mean, maybe he was genuinely worried about you being alone with the kids, and I don't necessarily mean because you were a danger to them, but if you just had a nervous breakdown. Now, because I can't tell if this was before or after, this seems very dysfunctional and chaotic. And it's no wonder your son ended up having addiction issues, because I went through something similar with my parents at the end of their marriage, before that life was like perfect. I couldn't have been more blessed. But having that much change and not a stable environment consistently can be really traumatic. And if addiction already runs in the family, which in my opinion it likely does in yours, then they call it a double whammy if both parents are addicts. And then if only one is, then you have a 50-50 chance of ending up with a disease. But yeah, just chaos. I try keeping up sincerely, but none of this makes sense. Let me know if y'all think it does. So we're meant to believe that a dude that's tweaking out every day and night and that she claims is up all night long, which how would she know that if she's not with him? But when the night said she wasn't, that he'd call a welfare check on her every night at 2 to 3 in the morning. What tweaker habitually calls any kind of authority? Anyway, moving on. Because he got mad. Because the day before Jonathan died, the judge ordered $1,875 a month out of money child support. And that sounds like a lot, but it's not. Because the mortgage, well, actually, we were least purchasing our home at the time, was fourteen fifty. So with fourteen fifty minus, or eighteen seventy five minus fourteen fifty, what do you have left? $1,800 for one child? That's a decent amount. Especially if you were working like you claimed you were. But just alone, that's a decent amount of money a month. That's better than a lot of people get. And isn't alimony and child support two different things? Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. There's an electric bill, there was a water bill, there was diapers, there was formula, there was baby food, right? We went to court the day before Jonathan died. Now that I say that, you're like, oh, now she definitely hated her kid because she couldn't afford it. No, no, I didn't. But I'm going to fill in some holes for you guys, right? He called the police because he was still out. What tweaker calls the police? I've never heard of it. He called the police. Why did Daddy loan you any money? He's so rich. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're done. Now my kids came back three months later. I lost them for three months. Joe, Joseph's dad, Joseph was in Key West. Said, Joseph, do you want to stay with me, or do you want to go? Do you want to go back to your mother? And Joseph said, I want to go home to my mom. And then, then why would I change? Because what do you mean why would I change? I'm not gonna have people. I'm not gonna have people come in here and rip on me when I'm filling in holes on a story that someone has ripped my story apart. So my kids were out of my care for three months. Three months. They bought. I, I will get into that. My mother's psycho. They paid cash for a house for me, for me, in their name. But the house that I lived in, that I was like, getting foreclosed on, I owed $169.99 on. My jackass mother made me file bankruptcy. Not once, but twice. I filed Chapter 11 to keep the house, and then she decided she didn't want me to have a house nicer than hers. So then two or a month later, she made me file Chapter 7 to give up that house. She made me file Chapter 7 to give up the house that my son died in that was beautiful. And she told my dad, she will not have a house nicer than mine. So when I had to file Chapter 7 after that, a month later, double bankruptcy in a month, she went out and spent 158000 cash. This part. So your mom makes you file bankruptcy. How does she make you do anything? And... She then goes and pays cash for a house because she didn't want you having a house nicer than her. How does any of this make sense? It didn't make sense the first time I listened to it. Now it's been weeks since I did. It's not making sense to me again, but we'll continue. She could have filed instead of chapter eight is what I'm saying. For a shit to your house. A shit to your house. They paid 158 cash, cash. And they only saw pictures of the house. And she bitched at me because I sent her too many pictures because it was messing up her email. But they paid 158,000 cash for another house. That was shittier than the house I lived in. Girl, 
you just said that you owed 169 on the house, but she goes and pays 158 cash. That makes zero sense. And unless she's totally crazy dysfunctional, and there's other testimonies to that. I'd have a hard time believing anybody with even a lick of sense would do that. And doesn't chapter 11 protect you from losing your house? Somebody please correct me if I'm wrong on that as well. Oh, because you were sending too many pictures, what you filled? And you'd have to send thousands to fill her email. Because my dad and I were going to go on the auction steps and pay cash for the house I live in. But nope, I couldn't have a house nicer than hers. How dare me? How dare me have a house nicer than hers? Your dad and you were going to go to the auction and buy it if it were auctioned off? The same dad you claim. And I'm not blaming victims a lot. Many have relationships with their abuser afterwards, but just noting that. They did not even see that house until they did the walkthrough to sign for the house. Because they were in street court and the house was in Donnie Wood. I've had a shitty life. I've had a shitty life. She just said that she has a shitty life because of her parents buying her a crappier house than theirs. But if I've never seen privileged, I have now. This is not what I constitute as a shitty life. Because that house was not titled in my name, the other house was. The mortgage was in my name on the other house. The mortgage was in my mother's name on the other house. My mom had control over me with the other house. So anytime I did anything that she did not want me to do, she threatened to throw me and the kids out. Should have bought my own house? I'm so sorry. My child just died. And my ex-husband wasn't paying me any child support. My parents were paying all my bills. Do you understand? She bought a house to control me. To have complete control. Why didn't Tim buy you the house in the first place? Because Tim didn't have credit. He had shitty credit. And when we split up, Noah's entitled to a house. Okay, bye-bye. Adios. See ya. I wasn't working. I had three kids. I'm sorry, one passed away. And I had zero income. What do you mean I should have bought my own house? What do you mean? With what? With what? I had a seven-year-old child. And I had a 17-year-old child. I had lost my mind when Jonathan died. Get a job? How? You know what? You get the f out of my fuck chat. You piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. You are just a piece of shit. You're a loser piece of shit. I'm not uh, ashamed. No, 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 no. They purposely bought me. My mother purposely bought me and insisted, insisted Penelope that I had a shittier house. Because three months later, they sent my son to boarding school and paid 20. And so this starts this next segment. Um, and then she explains how the last time she drank was the night before knowing what was going to happen with her son. And then she falls back on it not being that much wine. But Michelle, there's people out there who stay sober days, weeks, months, years and then go on benders where they drink like two bottles of wine. So it really doesn't matter how much you drink. It's just either drinking or not drinking. Moderation does not exist for people with addiction. 2,000 cash. It was a ploy. It was a, it was a 2,000 cash. It was a ploy. It was a, it was a, because Tim told her, don't you ever step foot in my house again. When she started, oh, oh, my daughter was sexually, uh, uh, SA too. Oh, her father was her too. When she started, the oh, Oh, my daughter was mm. uh, essay two. Oh, her father did that to her too. And she messed me up so much when I wouldn't let my husband touch me when I was pregnant for Timmy. I can't believe that as a healthcare professional, allegedly, that Penelope is co-signing this much on accountability and deflection. And she's literally saying grateful for what? And you chose to move into a house that your mom these behaviors would have been well established and you claim that she was always this way. If I knew this was debilitating or stopped me from functioning, I would not fall into the trap of being under her control, especially at the age that I'm sure Michelle was at. Tim said, get out of our house and don't ever come back. That was payback to me because they could have paid 169.9 and helped me out with the house that my poor baby died in, that my son died in. Because that house was not just the house to me, that is the house that Jonathan died in. And she made me give that house up. Not only that, she made me file double bankruptcy and ruin my credit. Be grateful they bought the house? Grateful? And that was double bankruptcy. Okay. Every time my mom said, do this, do that, do this, do that. And I didn't do every single thing she said to do, which was fucked up because I was an adult. She threatened to throw me and the kids out on the street. Be grateful? Grateful for what? Grateful for what? Every time I tried to do something to raise my kids and parent, and she didn't agree with my parenting skills, she could, she threatened to throw me out of her home. The title was not in my home. She didn't buy a house for me. She bought a house to control me. You're not, you're not going to get me upset tonight. I am in such a good mood that you're not going to get me upset tonight at all. At all. You will not get me upset. Because Tim had shitty credit. Tim had shitty credit. Because through his first divorce, his ex-wife did him what I can do to ATN. You can do to ATN, which you're pretty much doing now, but with the whole contempt and that he was the one that brought the revelation of you being a sex worker to you too. And you keep saying because Tim had poor credit. It doesn't sound like yours was that good either. Anne Marie's name wasn't on the mortgage, but her name was on the title. Same thing with tonight. Same thing with, I don't, okay, see you lovely. It was really stressed. I was really stressed. I took two drinks because I, that's the coping mechanism that I use to handle stress. Um, they're like, she's blaming her drinking on her son, no, I was stressed, and that's my coping mechanism, and so I chose to drink a bottle of wine. And they're like, oh, she drank a whole bottle of wine, okay, guys, a bottle of wine is three and a half glasses. Measure it out. Measure it out, it's three and a half glasses. So they're like, she drank a whole bottle of wine, no, I drank three and a half glasses of wine. 
I drank three and a half thousand one. Yeah, the day before I was 40. The one where you're looking at 10 and And the DA wasn't prepared for me. No, wait. Oh, it is 10 minutes. Okay. So the DA wasn't prepared for his case when he went to court. And the judge was like, no, you can't have a continuance. And so they dropped charges. Depends on the flags. I'm like, two and a half for you. <laughs> no, right, right. I'm big flags. It's two and a half. You're right. So we went to court last week, and I had been stressing, and I've been really stressing. Because, you know, why do you always have to talk about my kids? Because everyone else does. I'm just kind of filling out in. So Joseph went to court, right? And he was looking at 10 and 99. And they dropped charges. You know, um, the serious one. I'm going to be. Because I'm petty and I like uh, reading the comments that get people blocked. So um, apparently it's not taken off the market. The prescription was written Monday. So I think that you're wrong. I think that you're wrong. I haven't picked up the prescription yet, but I promise you that the prescription was wrote on Monday. So either my psychiatrist is crazy, which I don't think that he is, or you're crazy. Because he wrote me a prescription for Chantix on Monday. I have not picked it up yet. Now let me finish about my son, because he had two other holes on him. We didn't know. We didn't know what the hold was for him in Jefferson Tower. So they picked him up yesterday, and they transported him. But because I was on my live, I had to put it on. Do not disturb. I forgot to put it back on. Um, okay, like, um, Maz, can you just start blocking these people? Because I'm really good at it, and I'm not going to let these people do this to me, right? This is a good mood, apparently, even though it greatly resembles a spiral. I've always been a loving mother. I always have been. Yikes. Like I said about what my mom did to me in court, Joseph was 15. I lost my children for three months. Three months after Jonathan died. Thank you, Penelope. Thank you, Penelope. Because my doctor wrote me for prescription court on Monday. I just haven't picked it up yet. Thank you, Penelope. Must this Chantix thing is what really gets Penelope's interaction going in this live stream. Because she backs Michelle as far as it being still on the market. Can you just start please blocking these people, please? Hey, legit, honey. Thank you, Brandy. Can you please start blocking these people, please? Because it's distracting. I really want to read the comments from people that are being positive. And Brandy, just start blocking them. Penelope, I'm about to give you a wrench. Isn't that funny? I'm legitimately about to give you a wrench, Penelope. <laughs> who would have thunk it? Like, who would have thunk that? I'm going to give Penelope a wrench. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> That's trust. Anyway, so, you don't have your wrench yet? I don't know why. You got mods in here. I do have mods in here. I should have two or three in here. Um, I know. Brandy, you don't have your wrench? Hold on. Give me one sec. Okay, hold on one sec. Sorry, I was muted. But I'll be, I just gave you a wrench. <laughs> Brandy, you have a wrench. Anyway, thank you. Um, I don't know. I got to bring a prescription for Tannix on Monday. Um, Brandy, you have your wrench. And Veronica's here. Um, not Veronica. Um, uh, Brandy, you have a wrench. And has a wrench. Am I still muted? And let me finish that, Joseph, so that I don't have to. Who would have thought I would have given Penelope a wrench? <laughs> so, yes, Penelope gets her wrench. I think this was the last time I saw Penelope or even heard mention of her being anywhere. At least everybody's been wondering where she's at, wondering what she would think of Michelle's recent behaviors. And if you don't know what those are, I suggest you check out the channel. I see what you can't because she pretty much archives everything Michelle does on a daily basis because it's a lot to miss. I mean, you kind of wish you missed it, but then again, it's definitely captivating and disturbing. There's a generic version. Okay, I don't know, but I said Chantix and you said Chantix, so. I guess she never took that Chantix because she's smoking again and doing it off camera. If that's what she's doing when she turns her camera off, that is. Yeah, welcome to the tool shed, Penelope. Anyway, let me finish my Joseph, so now I don't have to worry. Um... Okay. Yep, welcome to the tool shed, Penelope. Respectfully, I got, okay, stop, <laughs> right? I asked for Chantix, he wrote the prescription, I have not picked it up. I will go pick it up sometime this week, but I'm not ready to quit smoking. It's been four days. I'm gonna talk about Joseph first. I'm gonna talk about Joseph first, and then um, I'm gonna talk about my drinking. Okay, thank you. Penelope knows her stuff. She definitely knows her stuff, I promise you. That's what Penelope does for a living. So anyway, so they got the charges on Joseph, and I came online. Um, she does for a living? She's a pharmacist? I thought she was a substance abuse counselor or something. Isn't that what she, okay. And about four days ago, five days ago, we were done five days ago, and they dropped the charges. So they were waiting for um, Jefferson Harris to pick him up, and he actually didn't know what his charges were there, and he thought he was writing bad chats. So they transferred him yesterday to Jefferson Harris. The dogs are place, so he's like, get him in here. Um, he called yesterday, and I missed his call. That's when they stopped it with the chances. Just time these people out, because they're really distracting me. I'll warn you about that in there. Thank you. Um, they transferred him yesterday to Jefferson Harris, and he found out that his charges were for shoplifting. Well, I think that is the last time that I put him out. That was the last time he was in jail, and he found it out, and then he was like, pretty much after you, because he's always done that. He goes to jail, I put money on his books, I take care of him, he gets out. And then he just goes, yeah, and why are you also invested about me putting something in it? You are done, you are. And this person wasn't even disagreeing with her or Penelope. They even acknowledged that it's still FDA approved. <laughs> with all this history that she's recited, do you believe that she was the type of parent to immediately bond her kid out and make sure that they were released just to have him screw her over like she always says? I have a hard time believing that. And I would more so believe it if she said she couldn't handle the emotional stress of him getting in trouble all the time and wasn't willing to enable that. But she says similar to that, but vilely so, as everybody that's watched her knows how she spoke about her son. Yeah, when I guess he was um, feeling like self-harming, she made comments about him cutting his member off and sticking it down his own throat or something. 
Anyways, moving on. Your squat. See ya. Adios. Bye. Done. Done. Your squat. I don't, I'm sick. I'm sick of the stuff, right? Anyway, so they lived in Jefferson Parish, and we didn't know which targets were, and they moved me yesterday. And I missed this call because, of course, I had to go block followers. They were booking everyone in the chats. And I didn't get this call yesterday. Well, I got this call today. And he's working this morning. So um, his charges were for shoplifting from dealers. He stole some gloves. And he had the money to pay for him, of course. I mean, why would you snitch on him online? I mean, what if the judge ended up watching this? And it affected the decision because they see that his mother is saying he did have the money. <laughs> Does she think about anything, I wonder? Or is she just worried about it looking like her, her son didn't have money to buy gloves because he was poor or something and she's worried about her image? It's just... Anyways. But he stole the gloves and he walked out of dealers and played stupid. Yeah, I was meeting my friend outside. She was lost. You can't get lost at Lakeside Mall in that ring. He was stealing gloves. But they had arrested him for shoplifting. So I don't know if, um, I just did that. I legitimately just deleted. I just blocked Georgia. I did it. So because she wants me to calm down and tell my story and y'all are distracting me. And for now being, thank you for telling me people out. Love you to death. So anyway, so just was chance yesterday and I missed his call. And he called me today. Already loves her to death. Wow. And his charges in Jefferson Parish are shoplifting gloves. This is like three years old. I don't know what the statute of limitations are on a misdemeanor. Either way, either way, when he goes to court tomorrow, because his court date is tomorrow, he's pleading guilty. Because he served nine months already. So he's pleading guilty if they don't drop the charges. Now, when he goes in front of the judge, he's going to say, hey, it was cold outside and didn't have any money, which is a lie, because he did have the money. I know that. So he's lying to the judge, which is pretty messed up. But um, he said, oh, actually, if they don't drop the charges, I'm just going to plead guilty on time, on time served. So tomorrow, he's done. He's done with Jefferson Parish tomorrow. That's one more charge that he's done with. So then when he goes to, yeah, so we must have served. Yes, yeah, he's no, he's been in jail for nine months in Orleans Parish. So the nine months is going to go to every other charge that he's done with time charge, with time served. So he, the nine months is going with him because it's in Louisiana, all these charges. So the nine months is going with him. The nine months is going with him everywhere he goes. So if they don't drop the charges tomorrow on him, he's just being guilty because it's a misdemeanor. It's like, I don't know, the gloves were under 50 bucks. So they may drop the charges on him. And if they don't, he's like, mom, I'm just being guilty because I've had time served. And they may have given me 10 days in jail. So that's 10 days off of nine months. So then they're going to transport him to Ascension Parish. So after tomorrow, they have three to 10 days to bring him to Ascension Parish. Now, Ascension Parish is where he wrote a check for, or he cashed a check for $5,000. Now, he did not cash that $5,000 check and keep the money. He was addicted to And somebody said, hey, Joe, you want to make some extra money? Because he was addicted to that. And so he didn't keep that 5000 And they know that. Because I talked to the detective at first just to find out what the charges were about in Ascension Parish when he first got locked up. And they know that someone convinced him to cash the check. And because he was on... <coughs> and just, <coughs> excuse me. I'm just going to tell the truth about this. He's my book, Your Honor. I was addicted to I didn't have a car. I cashed a check for somebody with my driver's license and a check cashing, please. I mean, I didn't have a car. How do you think I wound up in Ascension Parish, right? Somebody's like, hey, do you want to make some extra money? I was addicted. Mm. I'm like, oh, yeah. So I went and cashed a check and I made two or $500 off of a $5,000 check. So the max that they will give him if they max him out is five years. And I don't think they're going to do that. I really don't think they're going to do that. And so if they give him, like, I don't know, 10 days in jail tomorrow, that goes against his nine months. And so maybe if they give him, like, a year or something, then they're going to give him the nine months. He's going to apply that to the nine months time served. And I have a feeling that he might have to serve, like, three months or four months max. Max. But they may give him six months in jail. And if they give him six or seven months in jail, then he's getting out in, like, a week or two. Right? He may be getting out of jail in a week or two. And, guys, I am beside myself because my son may be out of jail in a week or two. He really, really might be out of jail in a week or two. Like, if they decide to give him six months or, like, a year, he may have to serve three months. But if they give him like six months in jail on this charge, it's only going to take like two weeks for them to pick him up and then he'll go to court on the other charge. And he's going to tell the judge, like, Your Honor, I skipped a grade, you know, because I don't school him, like I said. And the reason why he skipped a grade is because he was in seventh grade when he got expelled. And I had homeschool him. And I went to like this place where they teach, where they sell like books, like for teachers and stuff, like homeschool books. And um, they didn't, and he was in seventh grade honors. They didn't have seventh grade honors. They didn't have seventh grade, they didn't have regular eighth grade books. All they had was eighth grade advanced books. So he was in seventh grade honors, but we finished eighth grade honors in six weeks. Do they do honors for, like, I don't know if this would be considered the GE, like a GED program or. A homeschooling program i'm kind of surprised that they do to be honest i know my friends and i were always in honors or the national honors society but huh. it's really hard to believe sadly i don't know why it was crazy because i was like okay we'll do one hour a day on science we'll do like one hour a day you know in math hey Carol, we'll do like one hour a day you know for english and for sports i mean i had a gym membership and he was like i don't know 12 at the time or something so we went to the gym you know for like an hour a day and so really in about five hours a day we did all the subjects but we finished the entire book in like six weeks like the entire day three honors and so when he went because he was expelled for a year not the school year 365 days so that's why my parents sent him to military boarding school the following year that was the only year he didn't get expelled in three of the four years he got expelled from so when i went to chamberlain hunt i was like they were like he has to take a test um, you know, to make sure that he passed and she homeschooled him. And I said, well, he, because he was supposed to go into eighth grade the next year. And I said, well, we finished eighth grade honors. I was like, well, how, can we just give him a grade? Because, like, we already finished, like, eighth grade honors in six weeks. And the um, commandant at the school was like, well, if he can pass the eighth grade test, well, yeah, we can just make more pressure. And I was like, why don't we just do that? Because I think Joseph needs to be challenged. I think what he needs to do is be challenged. And so he took the eighth grade test and passed it. Like, he made 100. So he didn't see eighth grade. He went from seven to a freshman. So when he graduated, he was 17. So he started college at 17 with, um, with a scholarship at ULL and for aeronautical engineering. And I was like, Joseph, you're clean. You need to tell the judge, hey, your honor, my mom homeschooled me. I didn't even see eighth grade. I went from seven to a freshman. I had a four ride at ULL for aeronautical engineering. For aeronautical engineering. You know, I got messed up in drugs. I started doing because he was like, Mom, I'm gonna tell the judge, yo, these people, like, they rolled up on me and they asked me for my cash check. I'm like, Joseph, that is not how you want to speak to the judge. You don't say, yo, these people rolled up and they wanted me to cash a check. That is not how you want to speak to the judge. You speak to the judge like an educated young man. Don't say, y
So it's mid-May now. I don't know if she was doing this for a money grab or if she really thought this. It's sad. She did, but I mean, given the fact that she doesn't even care or portrays that she doesn't care, I'm going to have to go with the former. Yeah, she went through this whole spiel before where she had to tell Joseph how to speak to the judge because he was going to say something like yo, 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 etc., etc. But he sounds very smart and intelligent. It's um, unfortunate she doesn't find it. She doesn't find it in her heart to think he's worth fighting for anymore or whatever she feels. And so anyway, tomorrow he's going to be on. Tomorrow he's going to be on no matter what with Jefferson Parish. So they have three to ten days to pick him up. And I think like Ascension Parish is about I don't know, 40 minutes away from JP. So they have three to ten days to pick him up. And um, that's it. And so we'll see what they give him, what time they give him for the chat catching. They may be easy on him, they may not. They may put a book in him because of the Jachi. We don't know. We have no idea. But I do know that he is definitely not serving 1099. The max they can give him is um five years if they max him out. And um, I don't think they're going to max him out. I just don't think they're going to. And he's got nine months time served. And so um, he's going to be coming up soon. Real soon. And I'm excited. I am super, super, super excited. He sounded good. Um, my fear as a mother is that he's going to go back out and use. Um, you know, we have some different options for him when he gets out of jail. We do. We have different options for him. Like happily houses and things. Mm. Right. I know. Now, yes, he will be here for a week or two because I've not seen my son in like three years. So when he does get out, he's going to be here for a week or two. I'm not exploiting my son, but if I stream, you will probably see him on my stream because... I don't know, because we might cook together, because I taught Joseph how to cook when he was like 10, 11, 12 years old, so if you think my food looks like shit, well, I guess we'll just cook shit food. But um, yeah, I mean, he's definitely going to come up here for a week or two, because I miss him and I love him. So, um... It's hard to not think this is sincere, but then I get my naivete in, in check, and I just can see how, like, Lisa C. said on Best of Truths that she thinks this is the real side of Michelle, and that the mean, evil side is the YouTube side. But how she's acted this last week... Part of me is like, well, maybe she can't emotionally handle it. The unknown, not knowing what's going to happen with him. That if he does let her down, he gets out and messes up. Experiencing that could harden your faith. However, it's been long enough that I would keep this energy. And she said the other night that she texted Etienne about him coming to the house. And that Etienne, she like bragged about Etienne responding faster than he had. And she didn't know how long because he responded within two minutes that there's no way he'd be st stepping foot in that house. But... Somebody said something in the chat that I agree with that he doesn't want two people squatting there because in his book, Michelle's squatting there, <laughs> I'm sure. So I can understand that for sure. I do notice things about people's body language, however, and at the beginning of this story, she started moving her leg, which is usually an autonomous response and she's not conscious of it. So if thinking about that elicits anxiety or excitement, then it does have to instill something inside she isn't completely numb or cold stone hearted about it so yeah and i'm hoping that maybe with the time that he has served that he's um yeah um of course if i stream and he's in my thing people are like she's explaining her son no no i'm not not at all because when i talk to him on phone like, i've been coming up for like a week or two and i got like a whole bunch of shit and crazy to do up here like main shit i might think that it's exploiting him but uh, that defense mechanism saying it initially before anybody does the only reason anybody said that prior michelle is because you told everyone that you got permission to live stream the call with him and then we were all watching it and halfway through it was terminated and you had gotten permission and he got in trouble for it that was exploiting him but to provide somewhere to stay and then if he volunteers to be on camera wouldn't be exploiting him and anybody with rationale would understand that so it's not fair to compare the two people saying it because of behaviors prior to hypothetical based on this scenario because it would be entirely different that can really draw it's like mom's no problem like i love you and you always had my back every time i messed up you always had my back and you know something we don't agree on but i love you and whatever you need done you know i will come up and help you and that's a good feeling because at least i know when he's up here he's gonna be sober joseph never was a drinker never was a big drinker he only drinks one or two beer and i mean i don't drink and i quit smoking finally like ah, i want to smoke a joint like i quit smoking joe sorry um but anyway he had no clothes none obviously when he went to jail he lost everything but he's like mom they even took my clothes um when they arrested me because they had to search everything he's like, i have no clothes so he, like, he's none so likely a money grab because if she were actually informed i mean it's what may 16th now and he's not out and people went in her chat and said he got out and she said i already knew that he called me four times and showed the number that he allegedly called from even though when he calls anytime before it comes up unknown apparently and it showed a number and he hadn't gotten out <laughs> she was like see you guys think you know it all but i know he got out i know that and he was just transferred and when somebody went in the chat and said he was just transferred after best of truths said what was actually happening uh, I could tell initially uh, Michelle was appreciative or surprised that somebody told her what was happening. And then her mom immediately, probably Tara, said something. And then you see, after reading, watching her read the chat, Michelle say, yeah, well, why are you so invested in my son? How, well, how do you know what my son's situation is? And makes it about stalking her. Yes, it is. <laughs> I would be disturbed if somebody knew my child's status more than I did. But it's because of situations like this. You probably collected because people thought you were going to be boarding him. And he has no clothes and all of this. And then look, over a month has gone by. And he's still inside. Okay. 
I don't know what he's going to do with Penelope. He's real hard-headed, so I don't know. You can email me. I'll give you. You can get a Google voice number, but I'll give you my personal number, which you can find on the internet. But I'd actually really like to talk to you. I'd really like to talk to you. You're saying about help him find treatment. Joe is real hard-headed. Um, so I think that I'll talk to you on the phone. I think I can trust you, which is crazy. I <laughs> probably videos, but I think I can trust you to talk to you about some things that we discussed that I can't discuss. On. You keep that up where you say all the reasons why you drank and just say, instead of saying, yes, I drank every list. No, now it's, your son was looking uh, 10 to 99, the DA wasn't prepared, so on and so forth. It's making all excuses and not just owning that you drank. You have a thousand excuses. Do you understand? Um, I I'll talk to you. I, think I, I really think I can trust you to talk to you about things I have for him that I can't say on my lives, if that makes any sense. But yes, email me. Um, email me at msabotay1973, as you know. I have to wait. Actually, why don't you wait until tomorrow to email me? It's crazy to think that she's only six and seven years apart from my parents' ages. Wow. Yes, many have been wondering, has she been talking to Penelope this whole time? I think somebody, well, but I think it was the whole nonsense drama and that obsession that she released a video about. But yeah, has she been, been in contact? Did they connect after this? I don't know. So then is she okay with all the stuff that Michelle's done in the last month? <laughs> which is a lot, which is a lot. Because it's crazy, I shut the email address down and I reopened it. What a joke. You're, okay, somebody's gonna handle you. Somebody's gonna handle you, Molly, too, I mean. Um, but anyway, so, um, so nice great news. Now, everybody, Okay, see ya. I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. Yeah, bye. Adios. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I love you, Brady. I actually would like to talk to you. Yeah, thank you, Penelope. I really appreciate it. And I can't, there's stuff I can't say on this live, right? No, obviously, because, but I would really like to talk to you. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. Because I know that you're nothing like that. Okay. Yes, I'm sure she's doing so much for her son that she can't talk about on the live. Right. No, or in regards to his sobriety and getting him into treatment. I'm so sure. Tara, um, let me just that. bit her lip and everything for that screenshot. <laughs> I have to look up for one second. Go. I said go, but yeah. She promised me. But she's snow white clean. Well, of course she won me. But I was not in Golden Gifty chat and I was not in all chat. But whoever is in that chat is being nice, but I've been clean. Just so you know, there's two MGL Michelle Good's lives. Um, I know that when I got the info for like a day, Snow White stole my name, so I can't be MGL Michelle Good's live. I have to put a dash on it because Snow White stole my name. It was not Snow White and Owls, in my opinion. Someone told Ski this being weeks ago now. She was in there that Michelle was in Owls when I was watching and I went to the channel and saw her. As far as the other, I know, we know, it was Michelle in Golden Gypsies. And technically, Michelle, you did the exact same to Molly Golightly. She was known as MGL before you, obviously. But anyway, um, I really have a good night. I really love you. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you, Penelope. Thank you, everyone. Um, why don't you go in Ski's chat? Okay, let's go there. I warned you, Ski. I warned you. I know that they signed off on your warrant today. I know. I actually keep my little boy out of your name. You, I had to block your number. You keep texting me. I was not on this panel last night. I was not on Ski's panel last night. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. That was probably Snow White impersonating me. Because I guarantee you did not see my face on Ski's panel last night. Okay. I'm a shit person. Block me now. Okay, I just did. Bye, Kiki. Mm. I'll see you. Oh, God. We're going to just block a whole bunch of people. She's just like her sister, Katie Joy. Blockity, block, block, block. To be fair, because he wouldn't let you up the other day? No, that's not why. No, because he, because he brought up my son again and said, I'm rumoring him, and you should have seen the text message he sent me. And I called his probation officer, and I believe his warrant was signed off on Wednesday. Hey, it was Michelle. She said that, that that's the funniest part of something, girl. She claims that this was not her. I mean, how can you fake that? It was a person moving, too. I just don't have the ability to uh, record video on my screen in the screenshot. Did you see this? Whenever Robin was on panel, I had her on. Watch, she'll deny that's her, but I think she even has her fingers on her lipstick. She's about to blow a kiss like she always does. And uh, there's nothing lying for whatever reason. Yeah, that's funny. You called, you felt so bothered by the fact. Henry, you already said that you want to slap me in the face, knock me out, kick me in the... No, no. You made so many threats. Yes, I was on Whiskey OG. I was. I wasn't on skis. I always show my face. Henry, I'm going to pray for you tonight. I'm going to pray for you tonight. I'm really going to pray for you tonight. Because every time you comment on me, you threaten violence on me. Because she didn't believe in God. Because God took her kid away, or her baby away, and he lets assaulters and things keep their kid. Okay. But she's going to pray for someone that she despises, right? That Michelle wasn't nice. She was being nasty. Okay, that wasn't me, Joanna. I've been cloned. I was not in Golden Gypsy chat, and I was not in all chat. I've been cloned. We know that was a lie now, because it was her, and he didn't let her up. <sighs> Anna, you keep threatening violence on me? I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. I'm going to pray for you. Because you need prayers. You need a lot of prayers. Okay. Michelle and Marie can relate. I think she's talked about having similar conditions and you've made a drama out of the situation ever since. I have a panel that was on Ski's channel of Michelle and Anne Marie going rounds and rounds. And then Ski would put one backstage when it got too hot. I'm thinking about making a video. If you want to see that, let me know because it was pretty entertaining. But all Anne Marie did was go into Science Girls chat months ago and say her feelings were hurt or she was mad at Michelle. And then she came back to Michelle's live 
And Michelle, somebody sent a screenshot to Michelle. And Michelle made a huge deal out of it. And ultimately, Michelle was tired of hearing about Anne Marie's colonoscopy that week and wanted her to stop talking about it or getting sympathy from the chat um, because she was worried about the test results from it afterwards. But instead of just communicating, like, it was annoying me, that was wrong. Yes, I hurt my feelings, you went over there, let's move on. She went so hard in Anne Marie and then hasn't stopped. If you didn't want her to be your mom anymore, you could have just said that. And now, Anne-Marie carries it, and it's clear it bothers her, and she cannot stand Michelle. But I wish for Anne-Marie's sake that resentment would be cleared for her. I hope it does soon. You need a lot of prayers. It's not a big deal what I do. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Nobody needs to clone you, Michelle. Typically, people clone to, like, mess with somebody's reputation just to troll them or mess with them, period, and say worse things than they would to make them look bad. Nobody has to do that because you say the worst things. So why would anyone have to clone you? It would have to be somebody that says things as diabolical as you do, and I've yet to see one other than criminals. Yeah, so the cloning, nobody's buying it. I'm kind of, I'm glad you haven't been saying it as much, but you have used it in the last couple weeks. When I see what you can't has a video of somebody with a wrench, either her or someone else, checking your account. And then I called you out for it in Rayanne's, and you immediately said, blamed it on your clone. Very mature. But yeah, just know nobody's buying that anymore. And nobody would need to clone Michelle, because they can't say any worse than she does. But there's a clone of me out there, and people need to know that. I just need to say, I was not, I didn't even know that was in Golden Gypsies, and for Christy, that's an answer. Thank you for being polite in my chat today. I'm proud of you, and I'm like, oh, hold on, there's a clone because it wasn't there. And then I heard I was in all chat. She should not be in my chat, so you know, I'm just going to pray for her. Because every time she comments somewhere, she threatens violence on me. She's going to slap me in the face. She's coming to my house. She wants me to come to her house. She's going to punch me. She's going to kick me in the no-no. Anne-Marie, I swear, I'm just going to pray for you because you need prayers and help. Psychiatric help. But I'm going to pray. I don't know. She texted me and said, thanks for being nice. She texted me and said, thank you for being nice. I don't know. I wasn't in her chat. I don't go to her channel ever. I don't think I've been I think I've only been her channel once or twice for maybe five minutes. Anyway, guys, I'm in the stream. Love you guys. You have a purpose. And remember, Lisa C left Michelle as of a day ago. Please leave her alone, Michelle. She needs to heal without your bullshit dysfunction. She was sobbing her eyes out up there and probably feeling emotion she needs to work through and hasn't probably been able to process because she's been using modding for your channel and YouTube as a distraction from the grieving process. And from day one, she asks you not to mention it and that she's going to be taking a break. And what do you do? D divert your entire live lives attention towards her. And she ended up like leaving for weeks after that. And then you got so excited when she came back. And then what do you do? Your behavior gets worse and you subject her to criticism for trying to continue to support you because of your behavior, guilty by association. And she, I cried listening to that panel yesterday and that never happens because it was heartbreaking hearing her and chit chat talk about their losses. She, you are not an expert in grief. You, your life is not manageable. We all have issues, don't get me wrong, but you need to leave that lady alone. The second Michelle saw she was on panel, she started emailing Best of Truths that Lisa C was having a nervous breakdown, that she needed to be dropped, gaslighting entirely, trying to make Lisa C think she was crazy and to question her actions. And then when that didn't work, Michelle started going into guilt tripping and narcissism, um, trying to can or profess what she tried doing for Lisa that day and that she'd spent hours on the phone with some guy and was um, caps lock typing in Lisa Best of Truth's chat, yelling at her to check her email and to read it and even called her name at one point to read the email because she needed instant recognition f and for Lisa to know what she tried doing for her, to try to manipulate her. It's just sick. I hope Lisa keeps your number blocked and that you have, if even an ounce of decency left, to leave her alone. She doesn't even feel like, she doesn't even feel right leaving her home and stuff, she said. Let her get through it on her own. You're cool with exploiting your loss and talking about it all the time. Not everybody's like that. I'm definitely not like that. And it makes people uncomfortable. And while Veloma has taught me specifically listening to her grief streams, because it's taboo and you don't want to make others uncomfortable, you don't talk about it. But then there's the polar opposite of Michelle that brings it up at every whim, any time, to almost like a succubus trying to have emotional control over the entire room. It's very disturbing, very bizarre. And if it's sincere, you need to talk to someone because that's not normal and it's not healthy. Lisa, Lisa, it's good that to you. It's good that to everyone else. As Stevie Nicks says, you are stronger than you know. Adios. Thank you, Penelope. My email, msabitate1973 gmail is working now. I love you guys. Bye-bye. Keep staying strong. My chat won't end. I'm hitting the end button. <laughs>
I figured I'd share the last time I saw her, which was there that night, April 6th. So I hope everyone has a great morning, afternoon, or night. I will talk to you in the next video.